ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ now the innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, on this blessed day of Jum'ah, on this blessed day of Arafah, the day where they two coincide, we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see this, to live this day, to be of those who can reap from the virtues or the rewards given out on this day. And although we do it yearly, I want us all to put ourselves in a mode and listen attentively to a journey that some of us have taken before, some of us have yet to take, but should plan on taking, and that is the journey of Hajj. It's an obligation, once in your lifetime, if you're capable of doing so, from those things that were Buni al-Islam alayha, that Islam was built upon a commandment from Allah. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ فِيهِ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ As Allah says in the Qur'an, what means in it are clear signs, such as the standing place of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and whoever enters it will be safe. And do to Allah from the people is a hajj, a pilgrimage once in your lifetime. For whoever is able to find a way, a way there. But whoever disbelieves, then indeed Allah is free from, need of, from the need of the world. So the journey starts by the one, by the individual, the Muslim, male or female, going, making that intention to go on that journey putting themselves in a mode, and a way that we should already be living, but that this dunya has taken us away from. One of humility, one of simplicity, one of being humble. And this goes back to a hadith that we should constantly remind ourselves with. An Abdullah ibn Umar, Umar radiallahu anhuma, qala, akhada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akhada mi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam biman kabi, faqal, كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سهيل وكان ابن عمر رضي الله عنه يقول إذا أنسيت فلا تنتظر الصباح وإذا أصبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك This hadith which we have in Bukhari is authentic Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم ابن عمر said he took a hold of my shoulder and said Live and be in this world as if you are a stranger or a traveler. The stranger and the traveler never have comfort. They're never secure. The traveler knows this is a pit stop and they're going somewhere that they want to reach. The one who is a stranger treats everything with caution because he doesn't know his surroundings or where he is. And this is the way we should be living our life. And the one going on Hajj 
he turned his cap to put himself in that mode. Ibn Umar, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he used to also add in this narration, if you survive until the evening, don't expect to be alive in the morning. And if you survive till the morning, don't expect to, lie, to be alive in the evening. And take from your health for your sickness. While you're healthy, do good, do good deeds, do works for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, and take uh, before your sickness, and take from your life before your death. While you're living, worship your Creator. Worship the one who has provided for you and given you sustenance before death comes and you cannot do so anymore. So you embark as a, as a hajjaj, as a, pil, as a pilgrim, on this journey with little provision. You're not packing up your house. You're not packing up all your belongings. You only take what you need to get through your journey, leaving behind your family and your friends only a few belongings with you. You bid assalamu alaikum to them, and you enter that aircraft or whatever mode for you to begin your travel, not knowing if you will ever see them again. And this isn't pessimism. This is the way of the Muslim, that they're constantly knowing that any second Allah could take their soul. كَمَا قَالْ وَمَا تَفْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, and no person knows in what land he or she will die. We don't know where, we don't know when, and when it comes, there's nothing we can do to escape it. But you're doing this journey because you were commanded to. You're doing this journey solely for the sake of Allah, to earn His pleasure, to get that hajj mabrur, that accepted hajj. Why? Because of the rewards provided. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ حَجَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ فَلَمْ يَرْفُثْ وَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ رَجَعَ كَيَوْمَ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِ Prophet Muhammad he said, whoever performs hajj to this house, to the Kaaba, to Masjid al-Haram, and does not approach their spouse for intimate relations, nor do they commit sins while they're performing hajj, they will come back from hajj like the day born to their mother, with no sin, no sin upon them. This is the way they will come back to hajj, from hajj. Without a sin, everything erased from them like they were newly born. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قال أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال العمرة إلى العمرة إلى العمرة كفارة لما بينهما والحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة رواه البخاري another hadith of great hope a hadith that should make us all want to make حج on a yearly basis Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the performance of an عمرة to an عمرة the sins between them this is a كفارة for them between the two عمرات and the reward of the Hajj Mabrur, the accepted Hajj, is nothing except for Jannah. Paradise, a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what you're going for. To cleanse your sins, to please your, your Lord, to fulfill your obligation. You go forth, taking that pure intention, wanting Allah's pleasure, saying the Talbiya, Labbayk Allahumma Labbayk, Here I am, O oh Allah, here I am. Labbayk la sharika laka Labbayk. Here I am, you have no partner, here I am. Inna alhamda wal ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. Verily all praise, all blessings are yours and all sovereignty, and you have no partner. This talbiya, which is on the tongue of the pilgrims until the 10th day of the hijjah where they stone the jamrat al-aqaba, saying this, here I am, O oh Allah, at your service, this should be our daily life. But now you're in that mode of hajj and this is the talbiya that you get to bless your lips and your tongues with saying. You dawn in the ihram, you enter ihram, it's not just two sheets, it's a state. Where now things that were allowed for you are haram, no more intimacy with the spouses. You can't touch your nails, you can't touch your skin or, 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 or your hair, you can't use anything that's perfumed or has a scent. So that there's no division of classes rich and poor or someone of higher status than lower status. Those towels you don yourself with, <clears throat> there's no Gucci, there's no Armani. The sandals you're wearing are simple. There's no Nike and Jordans for you to go in. Everyone is in the humility, is in a state of humility that they should be living their life in already. Humbled before Allah. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, Yawm al tarwiyah which was yesterday, in today's Hajj, you go out to Mina, Saying this talbiyah frequently and praying your prayers short and as if you're a traveler but not combining them. 
Why do you do so? Why in this state do you do so like this way? Because our Prophet ﷺ, this is what he did, so we follow the sunnah of his, of his hajj, because he said, خُذُ عَنِّي مَنَاسِكُكُمْ Take from me your hajj rights. So you sleep in mana, in mina, in tents, and you wake up on the ninth of the hijjah, the equivalent of today, the day of Arafah, the grand day of Arafah, the blessed day where you head to this wide valley, knowing that you're going to spend a portion of your day there, worshipping Allah, begging Allah, crying to Allah, pleading to Allah, seeking forgiveness and mercy from Allah, because we know that that's the baggage we're coming with to meet Allah on that grand day. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Hajj Arafah, that Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is this special day, this day that we're in, and a day that is holy and honored, where the angels are witnessing who was calling upon Allah for forgiveness. Standing in a scene that when you look at it, it's like nothing you can describe. Reminiscent or foretelling of maybe how the Day of Judgment will be, where we will be standing naked, uncircumcised, the sun over our head, fearing meeting our Lord and facing Him with our sins, and only some will be in the shade on that day. Millions of pilgrims pleading to Allah for forgiveness, for forgiveness, mercy, and being admitted to Jannah. عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت أن قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من يوم أكثر أكثر من أن يعتق الله عز وجل فيه عبدا أو أمة من النار من يوم عرفة إنه ليدن إنه ليدن ثم يباهي بهم الملائكة فيقول ويقول ما أراد هؤلاء This hadith which we have that is authentic in the Sunnah of Nasai. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, There is no day on which Allah, the Mighty and the Sublime, He frees more of His slaves, male and female, from the fire than on the day of Arafah. He comes close to them, and He boasts to the angels. He boasts about you, the sinners of this dunya, who have come to meet Him on the day of Arafah, pleading for forgiveness and mercy, turning to Him for admittance into Jannah. He boasts to the malaika who have done no sin. And of only obeyed him, he boasts to them about you, saying, What do these people want from me? Because of what they've done to turn to him. And even though we're not on Hajj, according to the ulama, there is still a chance to be in this group. So make dua on this blessed day. Make dua and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Afdalu ma kultu ana wal nabi the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith that we find in the collection from At-Tabarani that the best thing you can say on the day of Arafah that I and the Prophet said was this phrase, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah la mulku lahun hamduhu ala kulli shayin qadir. So on this day, tears flowing, people worried, coming to Allah with their sins that they had in, this, um, in their life within this day. Remember, reminding them of that Yom Al-Qiyamah, that day of resurrection, Yom Al-Qiyamah, Miqdaru Khamsina Al-Fasana, the day which is 50,000 years long. Everyone's just concerned, waiting to be forgiven by Allah and to please their Lord. Then Maghrib comes, the sun sets on this day of Arafah, and then you can leave Arafah and you head to Muzdalifah. At that time, an open piece of land. Again, maybe it's changed now, or they're changing things as time goes. But for the most part, you're sleeping on the ground. Maybe you bought a sleeping bag. Maybe you bought a little fascia, a little mattress or a padding. But you still feel the rocks underneath you. It ain't comfortable. There's no sealy mattresses, no posturepedic, no uh, uh, Mr. Pillow. Nothing of comfort except what you think you can give for yourself of comfort. But who needs the comfort? We live a life of ease. We live a life of blessing. And we don't acknowledge the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. So you're laying there, it's so crowded. Sometimes, unfortunately, a male is at the, the head or the, feet, the foot of the opposite gender of a female. That's how crowded it is. The roof is your sky. The stars that Allah created, <clears throat> it's not some insulated ceiling. There's no يعني, air conditioning or whatever. It's you in the dunya Allah created. The sky that Allah ro- arose. Allah الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد ترونها ثم استوى على العرش. This is the sky that Allah said He erected the heavens without pillars that you can see. Then He established Himself above His throne in a manner which suits His majesty. So you then, you sleep in Muzdalifah. On this 
night, what would be the equivalent of this evening, the Hajjaj, right now the pilgrims are there in Mustalifa. They pray Maghrib and Isha together, and they wake up the next day, if Allah wills, and it's the best day of the year, Afdala Ayyam al-Dunya, the best day of the year, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, إِنَّ أَعْظَمَ الْأَيَّامِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَ فَتَعَالَى يَوْمَ النَّحَرِ That the best day with Allah in our year, the best day out of all of the days in the year, is Yom al-Nahr, the day of sacrifice, which is the day of Eid al-Adha, tomorrow, Saturday, in our calendar right now. This is Yom al-Nahr. They wake up on that day, the best day of the year for the Muslims. They head to Mina, they pick up seven stones, they go to Jannat al-Aqaba, the Jamara that's there, the large one, and they stone it with seven pebbles, saying Allahu Akbar with each one. Why do they do so? Again, because this was what the Prophet ﷺ did. There is no proof that these Jamarat are the shaitan. There is no proof that they are the devil. You have some in ignorance throwing slippers and sandals and bottles at this wall. And this is foolishness. There is no proof. We are doing the manasik of hajj that we were taught by our Prophet ﷺ. At this time I want to reflect on a moment, in, in this moment, for a moment. That isn't it enough for us to do something because our Prophet ﷺ did it. We don't always need a reason. We don't always need, always need to know why. Alhamdulillah, we are Muslim. And we should do and respond and obey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the inhabitants of Jannah will when they are called, Ayna ibad al ata'uni bil ghaybi ulam yarawni. The inhabitants of Jannah will be called to a day where Allah will show them His face. And He will say, where are my servants who used to worship me and praise me without seeing me? We do without needing to know why. We praise Allah and worship Him without seeing Him. We should follow the sunnah of His Messenger Wasallam, not having to have an explanation for everything. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, please see this. Make the change in your life instead of constantly trying to argue with the deen, trying to maneuver a way around a, 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 an obligation, trying to maneuver your way around the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. Go with what the deen gave us. Go with what Allah gave us. Go with what His Messenger ﷺ gave us. Because this is better than anything. The way the companions عنهم, the way they lived out the Qur'an and the Sunnah, this is how we should live. This obedience to the Sunnah, it will earn you Allah's love. Allah said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يَحْبِبُكُمْ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ دُنُوبُكُمْ Allah says what means, say, O Muhammad ﷺ, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Then follow me, he said, meaning follow his sunnah. So Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah is forgiving and most merciful. So on that day, you stone Jamlat al-Aqaba, if you're the Hajjaj, the tabiyah stops and you start saying takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillah alhamd. Until the sun sets on the 13th of the Hijjah, which will be sunset this Tuesday. The men, they shave their heads. The women, they take a fingertips amount of hair from their hair. An animal is sacrificed, commemorating the sacrifice of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. <clears throat> and then the person exits the state of ihram and uh, yani partially they still have some things they're prohibited from but then they can change their clothes or do whatever they go to masjid al-haram to the kaaba to the masjid in where one prayer is better than 100,000 prayers in any other masjid in the world that is the reward of praying in Masjid al-Haram. You go and you make tawaf around the Kaaba seven times. This house built, the first house built for the worship of Allah alone without any partners. Seven times glorifying Allah, reading between al rukun al-Yamani or rukun al-Hajar al-Aswad. Rabbana atina fil dunya hasana. Oh Allah, oh my Lord, grant for us hasana good in this life. And good in the hereafter. And save us from the torment of the hellfire. Passing the black stone. If you cannot touch it or kiss it. Because it's only a stone. This is not obligatory. Nor should anyone harm others to do so. But you point to it and you say Allahu Akbar. Glorifying the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this is done. You pray to rak'at behind maqam Ibrahim. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا وَاتَّخَذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى 
And Allah said, and mentioned when we made the house a place of return for the people, and a place of security, and take all believers from the standing place of Ibrahim salam, a place of prayer. So you pray two rak'at, reading Surah Al-Kafirun and Surah Al-Ikhlas. You go and drink some zamzam if you wish, water that we can still get to drink from till today, that came many hundreds of years ago, that spurted out of the ground as a mercy from Allah to our mother Hajar alayhi salam, as she was looking for water for her son to drink. And it is what it is drunk for, so you should make dua when you're drinking it. Then you go to the Mount of As-Safa, the mountain where our mother Hajar climbed, and she looked out searching for any hope, for any people, for any sign or trace of anything or anyone who would have food or drink for her and her son, frantically running between As-Safa and Marwa seven times, meaning three and a half round trips, searching for it. إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوْ اَعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاحَ أَنْ يَطَوَّعَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَوَّعَ فَبِهِمَا وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكُرٍ عَلِيمٍ Allah says what means indeed as Safa and Al-Marwa are amongst the symbols of Allah. So whoever makes Hajj to the house or performs Umrah, there is no blame upon him for walking between them and whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is appreciative of knowing. أقول قلي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ادعو الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على النبي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما ذي brothers and sisters in Islam if you've made this journey you know exactly what you're talking about and you should be reminding yourself of those footsteps you walked in doing these manasik, these rites of hajj. If you haven't gone, some of this may not be as clear, but you're seeing the amazing importance, the benefit to the heart, to the soul of going on this journey. And you should make it in every bit of your intention that you find a way, a halal way, of course, to go and make it as soon as you can. Next year, preferably, inshallah. So we stopped by this on the day of Eid, Yom al-Nahar, the day of sacrifice. The pilgrim after doing tawaf and sa'i, now they go back to Mina. And they stay in those tents for the 11th and 12th and 13th. Reciting takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillah alhamd. On each of those days after Dhuhr time. Again, you see some go before Dhuhr. They're abandoning the sunnah of the Prophet there is nothing better than the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Always stick to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. After Duhr, they will have picked from Mina 21 stones on the 11th and 12th, and if they wish and they're not in a rush, they stay till the 13th. They go and they stone each of the three Jamalat. Again, we don't know and have any proof that they're shaitan. We're doing so because our Prophet ﷺ did so. And for those 21 stones, seven to each pillar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It doesn't have to be hard. You're not using a slingshot. You're just getting it to fall into the hole for it to collect there. And you fulfilled your duty. Magnifying Allah with each throw. Then you leave Minna to stone the Jamarat on that 13th day before sunset. You go to your dwelling place where you've been staying until it comes the day you leave. And you have to go and make tawaf al wada, the final tawaf that you will make. And you go one last time around that Kaaba in your normal clothes, in your normal clothing. And you go around it seven times, reading between the two corners, Rukun al-Yamani, Rukun al-Hajr al-Aswad, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qana adab al-Nar. And pointing and saluting the black storm with Allahu Akbar. And praying your two rak'ahs behind Maqam Ibrahim. And then you leave Masjid al-Haram. And you walk away going to your airport or to your destination following that journey. Who does not want to be there right now, this year? Who in their mind is living out what they have experienced and can't wait to go again? And those who haven't gone, you should be thirsty, drooling at the opportunity and the chance to go and live out this journey. May Allah make us of those who can go make hajj to his house 
and glorify Him and praise Him and earn His mercy and His forgiveness. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم عرفة ويوم النحر وأيام التشريق عيدنا أهل الإسلام وهي أيام طعام وشرب وذكر الله. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the day of عرفة the day of sacrifice, the day of tashriq, they are Eid days for the Muslims. They are days of eating and drinking rather than fasting and remembering Allah. Except for those not on Hajj to fast on the day of Arafah, of course this was sanctioned. Those fasting today, you kafir sanatain, madiyatan wa mustaqbila. The fasting on the day of Arafah forgives you two years of sins, the past year and the upcoming year. If you have not done so, you're not sinning. And may Allah still grant you reward, inshaAllah. So these days coming upon us are still holy. Days we should say the takbir after every prayer. Ali radiallahu anhu, at all times, not just after every prayer. Ali radiallahu anhu, he, it's reported from him, كَانِ يُكَبِّرْ بَعْدْ صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ يَوْمَ عَرَفَةً إِلَى صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ يَوْمَ آخِرَ أَيَّامِ التَّشْرِيقِ وَيُكَبِّرْ بَعْدَ الْعَصْرِ Ali radiallahu anhu, he narrated, that he would, it was narrated from him that he would say takbir after Fajr prayer on the day of Arafah. So after every Fajr prayer, you want to say takbir and you want to say it at all other times. Wet your tongue with the remembrance of Allah. Forget the radio, forget the TikTok, forget the, the garbage that we listen to that consumes our minds and our memories. And just be saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd, till the sun sets on Tuesday. So he would say takbir from Fajr prayer on the day of Arafah till Asr prayer on the last day of the day of Tashriq, and he would also say it after Asr. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah said on this day, in its anniversary at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this day I've perfected for you your religion. And I've completed my favor upon you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And have chosen Al-Islam for you as your religion. The biggest ni'mah, the biggest gift, the biz- biggest present, the biggest blessing that we have in our lives, that we, will have, that we have been given or will ever be given in our lives, is being a Muslim. And Allah, He completed the deen, perfect as it was, perfect as it was revealed to our Prophet Wasallam. Lived by the companions عنهم, even after the life of the Prophet. Let us go back to the Quran, let us go back to the Sunnah and live out our deen the way it was revealed. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this ninth day tomorrow, these are from the best days. The best days of this world are these ten days that we're in. So in them, increase in saying, Tahleel la ilaha illallah, Tahmeed alhamdulillah, Takbir Allahu Akbar, and saying from those things to earn your reward and make your scales heavy on the day of resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a few quick announcements insha'Allah. Salat al-Eid will be tomorrow, 7.15 a.m. The furthest we can push it, I'm being honest with you, is 7.30. Come 7.30, we can't wait no more because we have a very limited time. Some have suggested, why don't you check a park? Why don't you check this facility? We went everywhere. We checked with everywhere. We went to the extremes that we could go to, trying to find a good location that would be safe, secure, free of pets, uh, free of uh, a lot of people walking around or driving around. This is the best we could come with. And Costco, alhamdulillah, they've been very kind with us, walking many times with Brother Masood, and we've gone in the evening, a few of us, to see how it would work. So behind the tire center, we have a nice private area that we're going to tape off this evening. There's ample parking, which is great for us. There's some Eid toys, Eid uh, money for the kids, some candy bags for the kids. So come tomorrow, but it's 7.15. Have that in your head, 7.15 to be there so you can park and reach the Salah area by its time. 7.30 is the latest we will start the prayer because we have to be out of there by 8.30. And again, we praise Allah for even being able to have certain connections that get us to have this convenience for us, inshaAllah. Anyone who wants to still have an udhiyah, sacrifice for them, a sacrifice or a qurbani for them on their behalf, in Syria it's $250, Lebanon $250, Afghanistan $200, Yemen $200. I need to know after the salah today so that we can at least plan it. Even if you don't have the money on you, and you have to bring it back later or whatever, that's fine. 
But you have to let me know today, inshallah, so we can make sure everything is in full effect. Allah maqfir lil muslimin wa muslimat. Lil mu'minin wa mu'minat. Lil ahya'i min humma al-amwat. Innaka anta sami'u al-qalib al-mujib al-da'wat. Ya maqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik. Ya maqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik. Ya maqallib al-qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati yamma yasifun. Wa salaman ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.